Okay, so uh, now we're going to work on bread shaping. So this is a dough that I've made. This is the Panda Campagna or the country bread dough. And we're going to take it and we're going to make different classical shapes with the bread dough itself. Many times when you go into bakeries, um, into boulangers, you will see bread um, that is in different shapes. Many times different flavor of breads will have a specific shape and um, it is a, uh, that bread's shape and we know it by that. So we're going to do four. We're going to do um, a kind of a batard boule, um, work on some scoring, and then we're going to do an epi. Um, we're also going to do a fugas, and um, then we're also going to do what is like a bishop's hat um, or a tabletaire, uh, which is like a fold over. Okay? So um, I've got my uh, uh, bread dough, it has fermented, and I'm going to sprinkle some uh, cornmeal onto uh, some sheet pans. Here we go. And then I'm going to take uh, each uh, dough piece individually. Um, so these are smaller amounts and generally you might do a little bit larger uh, piece uh, when you're making larger breads, but this will work for now. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, the traditional boule. So once again, um, that we've learned before, we're going to take and we're going to cup our fingers and push that dough so that we really pull and expand the gluten that is in that dough and pull and expand, okay? So to make that traditional round shape. And then I'm going to take and I'm just going to elongate it slightly, okay? Just like that, and I'm going to put that onto my baking pan. The next one I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the tabliatere. And the tabliatere here is, um, it is a uh, bread dough, um, and it has like, um, like a cap or um, like a flap to it. So we literally take um, a small amount of the dough, and we kind of pull it out. Okay, and I'm going to reach here and get just a little bit of flour and um, put it just over to the side. Remember, we don't want a lot of flour on these. So um, I'm going to pull this out and then I'm going to put just a little bit of flour on that edge and a little bit of flour here. And I'm going to take my rolling pin and I'm going to roll it out so it's fairly flat like that. And then I'm simply going to take that and I'm going to pull it up over the dough itself. So it forms this kind of uh, flap. And we'll put that onto our baking sheet. Okay. The next one we're going to do <clears throat> is an epi. And the epi starts out as a traditional French uh, baguette. So we're going to take our dough and I'm going to push down slightly and I'm going to roll in one time, roll in again. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to dock that seam down or tamp that seam down. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to push this out so that I have what is a traditional baguette. And that's what we would do as a traditional baguette. But now I'm going to take this baguette and I'm going to put it onto my sheet pan just like that. And then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to make some cuts at an angle and about two thirds down into the dough, but not through the dough. So at an angle, about two thirds down, and then I take that cut and I pull it over to the side and then I do it again and I go opposite. So one, put my little bit of flour on my fingers, and I do that all the way down the dough. And what this does is this represents a sheath of wheat. So that is what epi means, is a sheath of wheat. So, and you want these pieces fairly um, pointy, distinct, so that um, you can tell. But remember, don't cut all the way through the dough. 
You want the dough to be able to hold itself together. And there we go. So that is our epi or our sheath of wheat. So the last one that we're going to do is called a fugas. And many times fugas will be a very flavorful dough. Maybe it'll be uh, some type of herb dough, um, maybe with uh, wild mushrooms or something. So this one is fairly flat. And so I'm going to take and put a little bit of flour on it and I'm going to roll it out. Uh, you will have a little bit of resistance with the dough and I kind of like to roll it into like um, an oval it really is supposed to represent like a palm leaf and that's really what you're going for so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this dough and I'm going to put it onto my sheet pan just like this And then I'm gonna take a knife or the back of my scissors and I'm gonna cut slits into the dough. Cut there and then I'm gonna cut here and cut here and cut here and cut. Keep going through the dough and then one at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna open those slits by pulling the dough out. And I can literally go with my scissors and cut those a little bit more so that they open up. And I'm going to pull out the dough, try to make sure it doesn't stick, so that you really expose those, those openings. And you want the dough to bake with those openings. Okay, so there we go. So that is our fugas. So, once again, we have our fugas, we have our epi, we have our tabletari, and then we have the traditional um, batard or boule that we're going to um, score. So we're going to allow these to proof, um, and then we're going to go ahead and bake them. Here is our panda campagna in the mixer. Uh, that is mixing correctly. You see the dough is pulling aside from the side of the pan. Here is our con panda campagna that is in the boule shape, ready to be uh, scored. We're scoring it with a serrated knife. We're cutting three scores into the uh, dough so that it will expand in the oven correctly. Here's our finished product. We have the Panda Campagna as an epi, as a fugas, as the tabliatere, and also as the batard that is scored. Here is our tabliatere. That is a beautiful look. Here is our very nicely scored uh, butard. Here's our epi. And finally, here is our fugas. So these are our bread shapes made with Panda 